Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to do a proper winter warmer stick to your ribs thing. I'm going to do bacon roly-poly or bacon pudding or bacon clanger, oh yes. All right, first of all, you noticed I said greetings gastronauts instead of hello you lot. Um, that's because I always used to do that up until a couple of years ago and then I stopped because, uh, well, greetings gastronauts. I just borrowed that from Keith Floyd and um, I thought I should try and be a bit more original. Yeah. Anyway, Patrick Ormerod disagrees. He wants, he wants me to go back to greetings gastronauts. I'm not going to, Patrick, but that one was just for you. Right, why am I doing this thing that lots of people have never heard of? Well, it's, it's, there's two reasons. Last week I made a jam roly-poly and some people, particularly it's me in Torre, Spain, commented that bacon and onion in a roly-poly suet crust is uh, fabulous and it is a thing. But it's not a thing that I've ever come across. And also a few weeks ago I had comments on a video that I did last year of uh, Bedfordshire Clanger which is a suet pastry with a savoury filling in two thirds of it and a sweet filling in one third of it. And I had done that and I baked it. And somebody called Dave, the original Dave, I presume not even Dave 001, he took issue with my video. He said, uh, that's not a clanger, proper clanger, traditional clanger would be steamed, not baked. Well, fair enough. I hadn't come across that and the modern day Clanger has been kind of resurrected by a bakery chain in Bedfordshire and thereabouts uh, and they bake it. So they're wrong as well. So Dave will no doubt tell me that this isn't a clanger either because I'm rolling it like a jam roll poly or a Swiss roll um, whereas a clanger is not rolled like that. It's just filling and suet pastry crust. Anyway, I'm witching on. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe. When I say share, I mean share. You know, bung it on all your mates' social media so that lots more people can discover the joy of Keith Cooks. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, and subscribe, etc. Let's go on with it. Bacon and onion and stuffing, roly-poly, pudding. Mm -mm. We need to make the suet pastry first. So I've got 200 grams of self-raising flour, 100 grams of suet, half teaspoon of salt, and 150 ml of water. Suet, this is the hard fat from around the kidneys of a sheep or a, a cow or a, anything that's got kidneys, basically. It's very common in the UK, less common in other parts of the world, but you can get it online. And that's a brand that you will find. Other brands are available. They also do a vegetarian version. If you can't get any suet, you can make an approximation by freezing lard or butter and grating that and then tossing it in flour. Um, I've done that before and that does kind of work. Anyway, mixy mixy the dry ingredients. So that's the suet, the flour and the salt. And stirring the water to make a dough. And then wrap that in plastic film and stick it in the fridge to rest for half an hour. For the filling, I've got 255 grams of smoked streaky bacon. I've got one onion, and I wish I had a larger one, but <laughs> that's the last one. And 170 grams sage and onion stuffing. Most recipes don't use this, although a few do. Uh, I, I just think it will give bulk and stability to our roly-poly and also an awful lot of flavour. The bacon can be smoked or not smoked. It can be in chunks, lardons or, or whatever you like really. <laughs> I think having it sliced will give a better form, a, vi a better visual aspect to the roly-poly. I could be talking tosh, I normally am. Um, and some black pepper to season. No salt, because I reckon there's plenty of salt in that. So I'll make that up according to the manufacturer's instructions. I'll slice the onion and I think I'm going to just microwave these for a minute or two 
to get rid of most of the moisture, otherwise we'll probably get a soggy lump. So I've got some kitchen roll and I'm just going to sandwich the bacon in it, on it. <laughs> and I think this, oh, this is ultra thin cut bacon. That's actually two rashers stuck together. I think I'll leave them like that. Cause a lot of people think it's sacrilege to microwave bacon, but um, they're wrong. <laughs> I mean, un unless you've got really good quality dry cured bacon, but this is from the supermarket. I know it's going to be pumped full of water, so we need to get rid of that. And the kitchen paper will absorb the moisture that comes out as, as it heats up. And uh, this method is recommended by legendary food critic Jay Rayner. So if it's good enough for him, it's certainly good enough for me. Okay. Ooh. Do you know it's a rule in any kitchen, you've got to do that with your tongs to make sure they're working before you attempt to use them. Uh -huh. Get the bacon off the paper quickly because uh, it might stick otherwise. And nobody wants to eat kitchen paper. Now I'm going to make up the stuffing according to the manufacturer's instructions. So just throw the whole lot into a bowl, heat proof bowl, and stir in 350ml of boiling water. Mixy mixy. Let that stand for five minutes and then you can use it. I'm going to let it stand for a lot longer because I need it to be cool when I use it. Oh look, the begonian fairy's been. Yay! <laughs> now we need to peel this monster. Ah, oh, that's half rotten down the middle. Oh, I hate it when you get crap stuff. Urgh. Okay. Top and tail it, peel it, slice it. Time to roll out our roly poly. So, usual drill, flour on the worktop, slow mo camera. to a longish rectangle. I've got a sheet of greaseproof paper, parchment paper, and I'm going to margarine that, or well, olive spread, and I'm going to olive spread that so that the roly poly doesn't stick. I'm doing it this way around so it's uh, it's about twice as wide as the strip of dough. Now we need to get that onto the greaseproof paper. It's all good stuff. I learned this last week when I did the jam roly poly. <laughs> now we need to load that up with filling. So we'll start with stuffing. I think Americans call this dressing, but I could be wrong. You want to leave a margin a couple of centimetres all the way around, about an inch. And you know what I've forgotten to do, because I'm an idiot? Uh, I need to fry the onions to soften them a little bit. Um, so, better do that now. A bit of oil in a frying pan on medium-low heat, and then just add the onions. Just let them cook gently till they're softened, but not brown. Well, drain off or dry off the uh, onions. And really, we need those to cool down a bit. Meanwhile, we can spread out the bacon on the stuffing. You'll notice the stuffing didn't cover the entire piece of dough. Well, that's okay, I think. Uh, these, these doubled up bits, I'm, I'm separating them just to make the bacon go further. 
literally. Well, the onions are still a bit warm, but I'll never get this finished if I don't do it now. This will be okay. So we'll just spread those out evenly over the bacon. And at this point, it's a good idea to put your oven on to preheat to 160 degrees Celsius, if it's a fan oven, a convection oven. That's 180 for a conventional one, and that is gas four. Time to roll up the roly poly, yay! I'm just wetting this edge with water and then I don't know how hard this will be to do, we'll find out. So there's a lot of stuff in here. But I do want a big, <laughs> a large diameter roll so and that's what I'm getting for that. That's good. Smooth down the seam. And the seam should be at the bottom, really. Good. I'm going to sprinkle this with uh, polenta. You could also use semolina if you have some. This should work as a, a non stick agent better than flour. Now, wrap it loosely because the roll will expand. Then we need to wrap that again in aluminium foil. And hands up anybody who noticed that I forgot to put pepper on the stuff, but it's too late now. All right, so there's my foil. I'll just now I'm going to steam this, so you need to rig up a steamer, basically a big roasting dish, boiling water, and a wire rack over it and pop the roly poly on there. I'll top that up with more boiling water, but that goes in the oven for an hour. All right, this has been out of the oven for about 10 minutes. So let's see what it's like. Now, uh, one of the things with um, suet, steamed suet puddings is they don't really colour, or they don't colour at all. All right, let's um, cut it open. And now it's taste test time with Mrs. Keith Cooks. That's a nice skein of yarn. <laughs> Leave the knitting alone, darling. But thank you. Hello, people. Oh, this looks good. Like this. <laughs> right, bye. You do your taste I've test. got this one. <laughs> I haven't actually had a taste yet, not even a sneak. Oh, my goodness. You have been good. I know. So it's not jam roly poly, is it? Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> Ham roly poly. Bacon. Bacon roly poly. Mmm. 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 It's one of those. Mmm. It's one of those. It's one of those comfort things. <laughs> you just go. Mmm. Yes. Mmm. I think. I think I would have chopped the bacon up a bit, cause I'm just I'm just saying, cause that way you're gonna have to cut oh, through it. Pull it all out. Mm-hmm. Chop the bacon up. Don't put it in in long strips. <laughs> Honestly, though it does look splendid. Mm. Pretty parsley. I've had a long day. I haven't got anything intelligent to say, <laughs> so I think we better wrap this up. Yeah, me up. too. <laughs> Actually, oh, um, are you getting the stuffing? The stuffing. Oh, I haven't got to the stuffing. 
you have, it's all the way around. Oh, right, okay. I think I was focusing on not losing the bacon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's nice. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. A bit salty for my taste. Salty, same old, yeah? Same old. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't add salt and I forgot to add pepper. No. Oh goodness, no, no that's really salty bacon. Yeah. That's really salty bacon. Mm. There you go. Make your own bacon, don't put salt in it. <sighs> okay. Come on. <laughs> Thank you for watching and see you next time. I saw that. <laughs> Just like you out. <laughs> <laughs>